Hello and welcome to the Spooky Science Show. And yes, I mean spooky because it is the Halloween special this week. So we are talking about zombie cells, otherwise known as senescent cells. And there is not much to be scared about. Well, maybe there is, because we will be discussing a new study, work done by a friend and former colleague of mine, who has shown a novel approach for the clearance of senescent cells. So let's start with the zombie cells, well, senescent cells, But why are they called zombies? Well, zombies are mythical dead people who have returned to life as a walking corpse. And well, they don't look in the best of health. And I suppose similar features could be described for a senescent cell. These are cells that aren't doing too well, as at some point earlier in their life, they were exposed to some stressful situations, whether that's the introduction of DNA damage, oxidative stress, over-replication or other stressors that were just too much for the cell to handle. But instead of dying, instead the cells stop defining, they enter a so-called cell cycle arrest, and they don't lie dormant. In fact, many senescent cells acquire the ability to produce and secrete a variety of factors into their surrounding environment. This is termed the senescence associated secretory phenotype. So, like zombie cells, they look a bit dead, but they're still active. So, some of these factors are inflammatory components that are thought to be able to bring in immune cells to get rid of the senescent cells, as well as other factors are involved in remodelling the surrounding tissue environment to help with repair. However, it is thought that if the cells are not eventually cleared, and they keep secreting these factors, Over time, they could cause chronic inflammation and have deleterious pro-aging effects. Indeed, senescent cells have been shown to accumulate in different tissues with age, such as the liver, skin, lung and the brain. Moreover, senescent cells are thought to maybe play a role in different age-associated diseases, such as diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, arthritis, atherosclerosis and obesity. Scary stuff. But that is about as scary as it will get, because there is a lot of work investigating alternative ways of being able to clear these cells from the body, which could help alleviate symptoms of different age-associated diseases, or potentially ageing itself. If you're interested in this area of research, then one term you are very likely come across is senolytics. This refers to a group of drugs that selectively kill senescent cells. For example, the drug combination of desatinib and quercetin are thought to have this potential, and improved physical function and increased lifespan in old mice. Another proposed senolytic I've discussed on this channel is fisetin. However, despite some of these senolytics now in or entering human clinical trials, there are some concerns over the translational potential, as many are repurposed chemotherapeutic drugs, and they may not be specific to senescent cells in terms of the cell death and also probably have unknown impacts on healthy cells. What would be most ideal is to find mechanisms that are more specific. This may be more beneficial, but importantly would enable a more thorough analysis of the efficacy of the approach, since in the case of mouse studies, the only difference is the killing of senescent cells without any potential background effect of the senolytic drugs on healthy cells. So how can we improve specificity? Well, some of you may remember some research I explained last year and some earlier this year. One strategy exploits the fact that senescent cells typically express a protein called beta-galactosidase. The activity of this protein is often used to stain for senescent cells. Ta-da! But it's also been shown that toxic nanoparticles can be activated only in the presence of this protein. Another approach involved the use of CAR T-cells. I'm not going to fully explain how that concept works here, but effectively they exploited the presence of a protein expressed on the surface of the senescent cells to activate immune cells to clear just the cells with this protein being expressed. This latter strategy though is quite expensive, and there's still a lot of interest in finding more strategies to see what might be most effective and for what diseases. And the reason for that is because senescent cells are very heterogeneous, They are found in different locations and become senescent by different ways, so one strategy might be effective for one population of senescent cells and not another. Anyway, all this brings me onto the recent publication, Targeted Clearance of Senescent Cells Using an Antibody Drug Conjugate 
against a specific membrane marker. I'll start with the last two words first, membrane marker. So again, as I just explained with these CAR T cells, in this paper, they exploit the surface of senescent cells, so proteins present in this membrane, that aren't found as frequently in healthy cells. Here they decided to use the protein B2M as a membrane marker. I asked Marta, the lead author, why they chose this target, and while B2M was already characterised by the lab, and the expression of BTM in their model was much higher in the senescent cells than growing non-senescent cells. And also because it's on the surface, they could target these senescent cells with an antibody that specifically recognises this protein. We'll discuss later on why maybe B2M isn't a very good marker, but for now let's look at the novel approach to kill senescent cells. So the title of the paper refers to antibody drug conjugates. Simply, an antibody that also has a cytotoxic drug attached. The drug is toxic to cells that it enters. The premise behind this approach is that the drug is inactive until it enters the cell. And to enter the cell, it first needs to bind to the surface of the cell. And so this antibody drug conjugate approach has already been applied to cancer treatment with many undergoing clinical trials, but this is the first time it's been tested against senescent cells. So, does it work? Well, they tested the B2M antibody drug conjugate against different types of senescent cells that became senescent after overexpressing high amounts of the proteins P53, P21 or P16, which are all important proteins in senescence. They then examined cell viability to see what happened when the cells were treated with the B2M antibody drug conjugate or a control antibody drug conjugate and a control antibody drug conjugate that shouldn't recognise the senescent cells or the healthy cells. So the results are best summarised in these two graphs here. The one on the left shows it for the P53 induced senescent cells, and the one on the right shows it for the P16 induced senescent cells. Control here means the cells were growing, while senescent means, well, the cells were senescent. Then the first bar shows the control antibody drug conjugate, and then the second bar is showing it for the B2M antibody drug conjugates. Cool. So what we can see is that the P53 induced senescent cells showed a reduced viability when treated with this B2M antibody drug conjugate, whilst the P16 senescent cells did not. They also further validated this B2M antibody drug conjugate in another cell line that was seen in senescent cells that also depend on P53 activity. But ultimately, what this data supports is that antibody-based targeted senolytics have significant cytotoxic effects. Here they show it works in cells that have entered senescent as a result of activation of the P53 pathway, suggesting that this approach can be both specific and efficient. But the story does not end there. In fact, this work is very exciting, but there are some very important tests and further work that need to be done, which I will discuss now. Firstly, we need to talk about B2M. Whilst it was an effective, specific target for the cell line they studied in this paper, in fact, Marta told me herself, it's actually a terrible marker for senescent cells. This is because it is expressed in other tissues in the body, and it's unlikely to give specificity only to senescent cells. But this isn't a major problem, because the way that these antibody drug conjugates work is a bit like Lego bricks. If we don't like the B2M antibody, we can break it off and swap it for another antibody, one may be more specific for a subset of senescent cells. But this would require more experimentation to identify what an effective target would be. Secondly, so far the experiments have only been conducted in cell lines, so cells growing on dishes. It would be important to test this approach in mouse models before any human trials could be conducted. And before any steps are taken in human trials, it would be interesting to look at studies in mice and compare it to the results of current senolytics, as would this approach also have improvements in physical function with age. So, whilst there are limitations with this study, as a proof of principle, this is definitely a promising approach with therapeutic potential, if other senescent membrane markers are used, especially since antibody drug conjugates have good translational potential for human therapies. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this spooky special Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.